Hey guys, what's going on? It's Mark Mendez, uh, the real estate coach. Just coach right now. <laughs> Let's just the coach. Um, this is a uh, everyday people, a little spinoff to Chalk Talk. I'm um, just trying to get people on the phone, talking um, in person. Uh, just what it is, everyday people that are um, either entrepreneurs going through work, life, things like that to kind of relate some life experiences. So today I have a very, very special friend of mine, Coach Trevino, uh, Abel Trevino. He's the offensive line coach at Warren High School. Uh, very, very good friend of mine. Uh, hopefully we could tell the story of how we met um, and gained each other's trust. But I'm going to give him a call, and uh, we're going to go from there. I think it's very important to talk to these teachers right now because, you know, they're shaping our future. And, man, they got a lot going on in that classroom. I do not miss being there. Yes, sir. Good morning. Good morning, Coach. How you doing? Doing well. How are you? I'm doing good. Thank you. You on you on the show, man. You on Everyday People. You live and in effect right now. So so I heard you're drinking some coffee. Oh, now I'm setting up a cornhole board. Oh, a cornhole board. Well, don't 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 pull your back out, Coach. You know, don't <laughs> don't hurt yourself. You know. How you doing today? Doing well. Doing um, well. Doing- Memorial Day, three-day weekend. Um, y'all got a bye week this upcoming week, correct? Yes, we do. So do you actually get today and tomorrow off? I get today and tomorrow off, yeah. Hey. First, time, first time in 14 years. Wow. So that's, that's one of my first questions. How, how long you been in? The, how long you been in teaching and coaching? 14 years. 14 years. What schools have you been at? Oh, uh, I've been – my first tour was at Warren High School first time. Then I went to Bristol Middle School. Then I went to Rivera, Texas, in the Valley. Then I came back to San Antonio at Taft High School. And then currently I'm at Warren High School. Okay. Okay. Now tell us uh, tell us about somebody's uh, been to a state championship. Do you know anybody like that? Oh, well, I had the, I had the great opportunity to play in, that, play in the, the best game ever in Texas high school football. But I also had a great opportunity to play with some great athletes you know so to play at that level you need to have great athletes and and I was fortunate enough to play on a team that had you know two NFL players 18 out of the 22 went to college to play ball so I was fortunate enough to play on that team you must have went to John Jay if uh, you had all them athletes is that is that right no (laughs) you know we went to the belt you know the belt boys the Velt boys, Roosevelt. Yeah. No. I'm gonna let you make it on that one because we cause we boys, so I'm gonna let you I'm gonna let you brag about your school. I ain't mad at you. So you talking about uh Carlisle and uh Actually I'm talking about uh, his older brothers. I played with his older brothers. Oh really? Uh, yeah, Terrell Haynes, Robert Haynes Terrell Haynes is our running back, his older brother. Robert Haynes is our strong safety, his older brother. Okay. Part- Carlisle didn't get there until we left. Okay. So, so you old. You old. My bad. <laughs> so, uh, they <laughs> Coach, how, how, is it, how has it been being back, man? You know, um, we obviously got you on the show. You're a teacher and a coach, and, you know, I've been in that field, and I appreciate everything you do and you're doing right now for shaping young men and young ladies. Um, how has it been coming back this year since, since COVID? I think I think for all of us, we're just happy to be get some normalcy back, you know, for the kids. Like you know, because you know a lot of whether they believe it or not, being locked up at home, you don't have no, uh, you can't be social with their friends. You know, it causes a lot of like mental health. You know, mm-hmm. some some issues strengthen that because all they see is those four walls and themselves every day. Yeah. You know, they can't. Interact anybody and that I mean life is life and you need that social interaction with people you know and it's just I'm glad to see that we're back and all these kids can interact with their friends have a good time laugh laugh and joke around with each other you mm-hmm. know and and they also miss that interaction with the their teachers you know I mean because whether people believe it or not I mean we're in this business like you said earlier you know to make to make a difference in their lives you know, and if you can build that relationship with them, them students, 
I mean, uh, whether you believe it or not, the, the students love you back. Oh, yeah. That's, that's, that's one of the very few things I miss about teaching and coaching is, is the relationship with the kids, uh, definitely the relationship with my old line men. Um, yes. Man, that, that, was, that was the best one. So you the offensive line coach up there. Um, what is it? What is it being like? What is it just? I mean, we're both hogs, man. We 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 played yeah. the whole line, and that's how we bonded. Um, and I'll tell the story real quick, and then I'll let you take it over here about being an old lineman. You know, okay. being, being a lineman is obviously trust. And you know, I was a, a just starting out at, at Zachary Middle School, and you were the old line coach at Taft. And I told you about this kid, you know, and I was like, man, this kid, this kid's gonna be a dude. He's special. And I was like, he wants to play defense, but I think I'm pretty sure he's a guard, man. Like, he's, if it's, he's a guard if I've ever seen one. And you're like, are you sure? And I'm like, man, I'm positive, like, for real. I'm like, all right, I'm going to get him. And then this kid ended up starting four years on varsity as a freshman, sophomore, junior, and senior. Um, and I knew then at that time, at that time we, we had a bond because you trusted me and you knew uh, the kids that I was going to send you were going to be a little bit more further along than the other schools, hopefully playing O-line. So what, what what is it about the special bond of, of old linemen? Well, that's to your story. I did trust you, you know, and, and I asked you, I made sure I asked you, I said, you think he's ready? And he said, coach, I think he's ready. So he never played it down to freshman football, ever. Played in his first JV game, okay? Played in that first JV game. You could see the look in the kid's eyes. You know, you knew he had it. Mm-hmm. You know, second game. Second game of his, of his high school career, he started in Laredo. You know, now, of course, you know, as a parent, on the parent side of it, you know, you're scared, you're worried because you have a 14 year old kid playing against kids that are 18, turning 19. You know, but it's just like anything, it's just like college when you're a freshman in, in college, you're 18 going against a kid, guy that's 22, yeah. 21, you know. But, but it, you have to be able to trust your, your, your men. You know, and that's what it is about O-line. You can look into their eyes. You can tell, A, do they got this, or B, they're afraid. Mm-hmm. One is, you know, there's no black or – I mean, it's all black or white. There's no gray. Yep. You know, it's, O-line is all about trust. It's all about trust because you got to depend on those five guys to protect your quarterback. And the quarterback has to trust you and say, not go up to the line and say, man, I'm going to get blown up this play. He has to trust his in. So – when you coach O-line, and it's a special unit because you have to put that into your O-line and say, okay, you need to be able to present it to where your quarterback trusts you. How is he going to trust you? You know, and of course, you know, repetition and everything else, but they have to be smart. And you know that. You played the, you played the position. Yeah. You got to be smart. Everything at O-line switches in front of you daily. You know, so I mean, you've got to be able to handle everything they throw at you and like you said, we build those relationships with five guys. Those yeah. five guys, the relationships will still be built, built 15, 20 years later. Yeah, I mean, so remember, I know we're having a barbecue today, right? So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, oh, man. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I big believe, believe in the, the, the trust and the relationship. You know, I think O-line is obviously we're overlooked. You know, we're the big uglies up front. But you get like you said, you got to be smart. You got to know the game. You got to know the formation. You got to know your assignment. But then you have to have like a hand placement, feet placement. You know what I mean? Uh, you know your head placement. You know hips. Like, I mean, people just don't realize how much work going to be an offensive lineman. Um, bunch, bunch of, bunch of athletes like you know just think it's easy to be running the ball and stuff like that. But um, that's all right. Hey, coach, what do yeah, you think? I mean- Go ahead. It's it, well, how they always say it's uh, the first to blame, the last to fame, you know, and you, you just can't take a kid and say, okay, he's going to go play O line. Mm-hmm. I mean, because at the end of the day, you know, and I know that kid has to have something in him. He has to have, he has to be mean inside. I mean, he could be the nicest kid in the world in the classroom, but he has, when he steps on that football field, he has to flip a switch where it's take no prisoners. Mm-hmm. Because only only those kind of kids survive in the trenches. Absolutely. You know, it, it's never, it's like I always said, there's no gray area. Either I'm going to win or you're going to win. That's it. When you face that D-line, D-line guy, it's me or you, 
man, I got to take this personal. I got to take this personal. And that's what I would live by, you know. I would tell the old line to this day, it's personal. Man, it I, he- I, personal. Hear, I hear that. I heard it from the stands last, uh, the other night. Uh, was it Friday night, Thursday night? I heard it in the stands Thursday, Thursday night. I've heard it at scrimmages. I've heard it being right next to you. Take it. It's personal. It's personal. Let me ask you this. How does that translate to life, Coach, for these young men? Well, you know, sometimes some coaches, it's about football. You know, I've always taken, and, and this is just my philosophy, it's what we do, what we do with old linemen, it's more, it's not about football. It's about making five young men the greatest human beings they can be. You know, that they're going to make a hell of an impact on society. You know, they're going to do well. They're going to be right, you know, and you're going to be proud of them, you know, and, and you hope you, you gave them the life lessons and the tools that they can take it. Once they leave those four walls for four years and they go out into the real world and they are, I mean, they're very productive mm-hmm. and you can be proud of them. Absolutely. And that comes from the football field. I mean, whether you believe it or not, it, people say, what's well, about football? It's not about football. It's about teaching these young men life lessons, how to be a man. You know, like the way, the way you, you had that at, at Jordan, how to tie a tie, how to balance a checkbook. Yeah. It, it's those that those young men need still. Absolutely. You know, you know it, it's crazy. It's crazy. And I'll tell you, I'll tell you, one of my boys that I coach staff played at San Diego State, you know. Mm-hmm. Love this kid to death. But, you know, he had a, a blowout one time on the highway. And he said, Coach, he called me in the middle of the night. Coach, I ain't got no tools. I need help. There I go, 1230 in the morning. Load up my truck, put the jack in my truck, and I go. But it, it's that relationship, you know. And while I'm there, I said, this is how you change the tire. You know, this is what happens when you have a blowout. This is what you need to do. And, he, and just like when I coached him on the old line I coach them through life lessons, you know. So and, and that's you know that that's that's like I said, that's what I miss the most, man. You know, the Jordan Jens Club that I had teaching them the life lessons because, you know, especially for me in middle school, um, you you're kind of trying you're trying to figure out, you know, they, some of them ain't grown into their bodies yet. Some of them they look like they could be they they could be it, then they can't, you know, they they're not, or they just don't have the passion, they don't follow through with it. You know, it's tough when I go out there, you know, I went out there Thursday and I'm looking at the kids, you know, I look through the program and, man, I could have swore I would have had 10, 15, 20 kids on that on that varsity roster by now. Um, and it's down to like shh, five to 10, you know, and that's just, it's it's okay. You know, it's okay that they're not playing varsity football um, yeah, because it's not for everybody. We know that. We know this is not for everybody. Um, right. But you just hope they're taking the lesson, like you said, that I've taught them in life in whatever they're playing. You know, I'm walking out the stadium and I see a couple of kids that I coach. One of them's like, yeah, I'm just playing basketball. Now he's about as tall as me now. I'm like, dang, man, you stretched all the way out. He's like, yeah, I'm just hooping now, coach. I'm like, that's good. As long as you're doing something that you find passionate about and that you love. So um, just to wrap this up, coach, uh, what, what's, your, what's your favorite part about being a coach and a teacher? My favorite part has to be seeing the kids every day. Yeah. Being able to talk to them, being able, I mean, you know, and I know you don't know kids lives, but you have to build that relationship to where you understand their lives, what they're about. You don't know what's going on at home, but you want to give them that safe shelter, Mm -hmm. you know, where they can come and talk to you Mm -hmm. and and build that relationship. You know, you know me, man. I mean, I'm always there for the kids. And and that's what the number one thing is. It's about the kids. It's always been about the kids. Never been about ball. Absolutely. So, man, I appreciate you. I've been trying to, you know, uh, again, we're trying to do this everyday people. Um, you're the first, oh, yeah. I believe you're the first teacher and coach we have on here. So I, I know that's a good thing because I'm going to have a whole bunch of other people. Uh, Selena's been trying to be on the show too. I'm like, all right, man, I'll let you know when I'm going to get you, you little young buck, you know what I mean? But yeah, um, yeah, no. no, I'm honored, man. I'm honored to have you, you know, no. obviously coming from no, the no. field. Uh, I know how, how hard it is to what y'all are doing, so I just thank you, man, for that and everything you're doing. And um, appreciate you taking care of my boys that I've coached in middle school that are now up there. And uh, Oh, no doubt. So cool. No doubt. All, day. All gas, no brakes. 
All gas, no brakes, baby. That was our mantra before it was UT. Just, just so y'all know, we didn't, we didn't take that from UT. That's we, we've been saying all gas, no brakes. We printed that on the shirt. We printed that on a shirt eight years ago. Eight years ago, real talk. So eight years ago. All right, coach. Eight. Well, I will hopefully see you here in a little bit. Um, yes, sir. And uh, man, good talk. I appreciate you being on the show again. This is Coach Trevino, Warren High School uh, football coach. And uh, what 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 what, uh, what what course are you teaching now? Oh, I still teach world history. World history. Hey, if if you don't know your history, is 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 bad. It's gonna repeat itself. I used to teach Texas history, so that's a good subject. All right, coach. You need anything else you want to leave us with? Hey, uh, all I want to say is thank you. Thank you for having me on. It's a pleasure. You know, I love what I do. I lo- I do it for the kids. You know, even though at, at the end of the day. We're still struggling with that with COVID, you know what I'm saying? Uh, mask up so we can continue doing what we do, you know? We want to continue being on the field, and everybody needs to do their part so we can stay on the field. Absolutely. You heard that from the coach. Mask up, you know, take a vaccine, no comment. That's it. Pray about it. If you, <laughs> the, you Whichever one you want to do, pray about it. Stop worrying about left or right or red or blue. Pray about yep. it. You know, pray yep. about it. If you feel it, get it. If you don't, then hey, that's cool. I respect that too. So, but mask up. Yep. All right, coach. When well, I'll see you, man, I appreciate you. I, all right. See you, see you soon. All, all right, right Mark. talk to you later. Well, all right. So, that was uh, Everyday People episode. Hell, you got to help me out here. Four? I think that's four. Five. Yeah. Ben. Episode five. We got episode five. It'll be on the bottom of the thing. Coach Trevino from Warren High School, the O-line coach, one of my good friends. We started again. Coach, when I was at Zachary, he was at Taft. I went to Jordan. He went to Warren. Good people, man. Uh, man's man. It's all gas, no brakes. So we appreciate you. All you teachers out there, uh, stay safe, you know, in the classroom. Keep impacting those kids' lives. We appreciate everything they'll do. All right. Talk to y'all later.